Hello everyone, it's David Tercivi here again, and uh, this week I'm going to be speaking to you about noise reduction. And now those of you with uh, Resolve Lite who know that you do not have noise reduction built into your program, don't worry, uh, I'm going to talk about some alternatives you have, both in plugins and free things you can do within the program itself. Um, but we're also going to examine noise as a overall look of exactly what is noise reduction, what's it doing, and, and how it affects your shot and good ways to get around it. We'll be looking at both the spatial and temporal internal resolve noise reduction as well as neat video OFX. Um, the video we're going to look at all this on is a music video that I did a couple of months back for a band called We Are The Ocean. Uh, the song's great, it's called Good For You, uh, you should check it out, it's a really great video. It's a single one take video, which is really impressive, shot by a good friend of mine Jake Uris and uh, directed by Edward John Drake. Now this video was shot on Dragon using the Highlight OLPF at a 1600 ASA and uh, they shot using Van Diemen Lomo Round front anamorphics which are pretty cool little lenses with uh, cook speed pancro rear elements. They ended up shooting wide open and so uh, they had a lot working against them. This is a single take, one shot music video, it's about four minutes long give or take and is a real incredible work in terms of the choreography and the camera moves and the lighting transitions. So they had a lot of things working against them while they were making this. The video that we're seeing and that went out finally was the final take of this. And so as they were shooting throughout the day, they tried to hit magic hour. But each take, um, as time went on, got obviously darker and darker. And so they ended up having a bit of noise problem by the time they got to the end. But it's it's worth it because uh, the final take is such energy and everything hit its marks perfectly. It's a really great video. but. At first they were worried that things were too dark and there was too much noise, so we had to do a lot of stuff to sort of clean this up and make it usable. Um, we're going to take a look at just one part of this video that I think really uh, does a good job of showing noise and um, what you can do with it to help eliminate it. So this is a shot from the beginning of the video. So I've got this very complex node tree right here, and this is not what I use to create the video. This is a, a sort of learning node tree I've set up to show you different things about noise so you can better understand it and your different options in terms of eliminating it. When we got this shot it came in looking like this. Now that may look unusable and uh, I'm actually not working off the raw R3Ds here. We had to ship this video out very quickly and so the editor in LA had to send me overnights of the uh, finished product which was de-squeezed and compressed down to 1080p um, via DNx HD 220 megabit and uh, there's still a lot of latitude in the final footage but as you bring that up you reveal a lot of the noise that is still in the original R3Ds but is exacerbated by our workflow. Uh, fortunately we have lots of tools at our disposal to get rid of that so let's take a look at this. So real quick just so you know I have this first primary node here which isn't doing anything except bringing the levels and the color up to where we used it for the final video. So for all intents and purposes, we can ignore this. Now, some people like to denoise before they do any primary corrections. I prefer to denoise after. That's partially a workflow thing. So you'll notice all denoise solutions tend to be taxing on your GPU and CPU, depending on how your system is set up. You can do things like node caching and smart caching, which we may talk about at a later time, but but it's easy to get caught up fiddling with noise reduction instead of focusing on getting the grade out and done quickly. So what I tend to do is make sure I've got all my primaries done, go through with my secondaries, and then as my very last pass, I'll go in and denoise the shots I really need it. So let's take a look at this. The first thing you want to do when you take a look at noise, if you're not in a hurry and just slapping something on top of it, is understanding what parts of the shot are actually noisy. So you can see here, and let me blow this up for you, so there's really two types of noise. There's chroma noise and there's luminoise. And luminoise tends to be a sort of even wash of noise across your image, especially you'll see it a lot more in shadows than highlights. But what it is, is a sort of an even noise across everything. And, and sometimes it can be very pretty. For example, an Alexa at 1600 ASA is going to be not a tremendously clean image, but it's going to be have a, a pretty grain that feels sort of organic. And if you're lucky, you can get away without having to denoise it. Um, other cameras you can run into something that you have a little bit more chroma noise and so you can see in this face right here we've got this really ugly noise there's a lot of greens there's a lot of reds you can see over here there's just a lot of stuff going on that is not pretty at all and even emotion which helps to get rid of noise it's still really ugly stuff but it's not 
uh, all is not lost, so uh, there's still a lot we can do here. And so what I've done first to better illustrate exactly what type of noise we have here is I've, I've created a splitter combiner node, and this is not something you need to do typically when noise reducing, but I just want to show you what noise is so you have a better understanding. And you can do that right here with the splitter combiner node, alt Y on Windows, command Y on Mac. And what this does is it splits the image up into a red, green, and blue channel. And so let's take a look at this right now. So what I've done is shown only this red channel here. And you can see just how noisy the red channel is. His face back here, there's a lot of noise going on right here. If I switch over to the green channel, however, you'll see this is a lot cleaner image. And this is pretty typical for digital cameras. Uh, pretty much across the board, but especially in cameras like the F65, they have a lot bigger and more present green photo sites because green is most important when encoding that digital data. So they tend to focus on making sure the green channel is as clean as possible. And that really reflects right here. You can see there is still noise present, especially considering how dark this image was when we started, but it's a lot cleaner than that red channel right here, which is just a mess. Going over to the blue channel, we can see it's somewhere between, it's definitely not as noisy as the red, but it is still much noisier than that clean green channel. And uh, so that gives you a good idea, and this is actually a technique you can use later. So if you have a camera that, for whatever reason, has a bad red photo sites and is really noisy, you can actually do a splitter node like this and apply your noise reductions solely to the red channel, which will make a big difference in cleaning up just the problem areas with noise while leaving the rest of your image detailed. The big thing about noise reduction is you want to do it as little as possible because it has the tendency to sort of smooth out your image to lose a lot of the highlight details and, and luma details which make your sort of entire image look soft and washed out and in a worst case scenario your skin gets sort of plasticky and the whole thing feels just really digital and there are things you can do to get rid of that uh, even if you don't have an option there especially things like adding grain and different types of sharpening uh, which we'll cover in another video at a later time. But one of the great techniques for getting around that is focusing on just denoising the parts that need to be, whether that's certain luma areas or certain color channels. So, for example, if I were just to denoise this red channel, there would still be noise, as we can see in the blue channel, but a lot of the noise wouldn't be nearly as bad as what we're seeing with everything all combined. Uh, similarly, I've created a layer node here um, with the Luma and the Chroma, and these are recombined using just the composite mode add. And uh, Luma channel, this node has uh, all the saturation reduced, and the um, Chroma channel has all the gain taken out. And again, we can take a look and see the noise isn't terrible in the Luma. Um, you can see there is noise here, and this is what I'm talking about with Luma noise, where it's definitely present but it's not sort of like just on his skin where we would see like with that red noise or um, any particular area. It's sort of an even wash and this noise itself isn't that ugly. It's, it's not desirable exactly the way it is. The Dragon doesn't have particularly pretty noise like you'd find in some more filmic cameras, but it's still a great image. And uh, this noise by itself, I would probably argue, especially on a tight deadline that is present and we can move on and not worry about it. And uh, let's take a look at the chroma noise now. You'll see that this is because it's such a dark image we don't have much to work with. So let me turn up the gamma so we can see a little bit better. And you can see again, especially in his face, there's tons of chroma noise here. Back here, there's a lot of blue noise right in here. A uh, little bit of green in his shirt. But you can very quickly see, you know, especially in these shadows, that most of the noise problems we're going to be working with here are in the chroma noise. So let me go ahead and reset that, get out of here, and uh, go back to our full view. And now we can focus on the actual noise reduction. So again, these notes right here aren't actually for doing any stuff. Um, I've just got them here to illustrate exactly what kind of noise reduction problems we're dealing with. And so give you a better understanding of what noise reduction is doing. Now Resolve has two noise reductions built in, and this is only on the, the full licensed version of Resolve, so those of you with uh, Blackmagic cameras or those of you who have purchased the Resolve software, you have access to this. Those of you using the free Resolve Lite, um, which I guess actually the, the names have changed now with uh, 
Resolve 12. So you have Resolve 12 as the free version and Resolve 12 Studio as the pay version. But regardless, these are the two noise options. You can get to them right here under this little star. And so we have spatial noise reduction and temporal noise reduction, and they work in two different ways. And uh, you can use them by themselves, together, or whatever combination you find works best. And we'll go over some some options with, with noise reduction that you can do in the future to sort of make things even better, similar to how we've done our splitter nodes up here. But first, let's just take a look at this spatial node that I've got already up here. So turn this on quickly. We've got a couple of options here, your radius, your blend, and your luma and chroma, which you can gang or ungang, and uh, I've got them unganged right now. But let me go ahead and just reset everything. So this is what we're looking at right out of the box. There's, there's nothing on, and uh, we've got lots of noise. So let me just, without doing anything, just turn this up a little bit, and you can quickly see the noise on our image is disappearing. Uh, the noise is still there. I mean, you can see colors and stuff here, and it's, it's maybe a little bit blocky, but it's a lot less than it was before. And uh, we can turn it up even more. And uh, you can see all the noise is gone, but we've replaced it with this ugly sort of blocking effect. So what the spatial noise reduction is doing is searching for areas of similar color and luma values and sort of blurring them together. And so what that does is it gets rid of all the individual noise specs, but we lose out on some stuff at the same time. We lose in particular edge sharpness and we get these artifacts where the noise reduction is thinking like, for example, on his nose here, these are two distinct areas. And in an effort to preserve the edge detail, it's, it's sort of created this harsh mask here. And that's what's causing this blocking. And so this is not a very pretty noise reduction. It works in a pinch, but this is not necessarily what we want to use. Um, but let's talk about these options here and see how we can make this a little better. So the radius changes the search area that the uh, algorithm uses in order to create different amounts of uh, noise reduction. So let's turn this up to large here and zoom this back in. You can see a lot of the blocking is, is significantly improved. You can see there's almost a little bit of blending going on here. There's not that harsh edge. And while it's not perfect, it is significantly improved over the uh, small radius. Now this comes at a little bit of an expense. The small search area allows your computer to run much faster because for every frame, it's not having to search tons and tons of pixels just to make one pixel look correct. The uh, larger you create your radius, the more time your CPU or your GPU has to spend searching through all these in order to optimize what areas get smoothed and what areas get left alone. And you'll find this in all noise reduction. There's a delicate balance between quality and render speed. And it helps to have the fastest GPU you can and making sure you have enough VRAM to deal with larger scenes, especially when we get to the temporal noise reduction. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Going back and thinking about, you know, how we saw more noise here in the red channels than we did in the Luma channels, we can also optimize which areas get more details affected. For example, if we were to just denoise in the Luma channel, and let me turn my chroma noise off, you can see we've got lots of blurring. And so we've lost a lot of detail that the Luma channel holds, and uh, we still retain a lot of this noise. And if we do the opposite, you can see we've got this very even Luma noise, which almost looks filmic, um, and taking away a lot of that ugly blocking color noise. So this is a lot better start already. So zooming in, we can even see that some of that strange blocking isn't happening here because a lot of that is affected from the, the Luma noise, um, noise reduction, because most of the detail in your image resides within the Luma channel. And so you want to be very careful when increasing this Luma threshold to do as little bit as possible. A deft touch here is definitely preferred. So I've turned the Luma up a little bit and we started getting some blocking, but you can see this is a, not a bad start. If we threw some film grain on here, this would be a pretty good image and I'd be pretty happy with that. Now we've got this uh, blend tool too, which is, for example, if you don't want to have to go back and regrain things, you can start increasing this and it blends this image with the original image. So you get some of the original noise back, like you can see back here and over here, but it helps reduce some of the blockiness that is a big problem uh, if you don't go back and regrain things. So that's spatial noise reduction. It's the fastest noise reduction you have, but it's also the least precise and can easily result in those blockings and those plastic looking skin. Okay, so let's take a look at temporal noise reduction over here. And now 
the way temporal noise reduction works is it compares frames next to the frames. So let's say this is our frame that uh, we happen to be noise reducing at this time. And so we'll look at a couple frames before. So you can see, look at the noise right here in this car. As I click back, you can see the noise moves pretty dramatically. And as I go shot to shot, you can see the noise actually moves. And uh, the, what temporal noise reduction does is it says, if I average enough of these frames, then the noise on this should move frame to frame, and it shouldn't be the same in any single frame. And by averaging these and combining them, we can figure out what this image was before all this noise was here. And it's a very clever trick, um, and it works exceptionally well in terms of getting rid of just noise while preserving or luma details. So things like his shirt here, his eyes, so things like his shirt here, or the specularity in his eyes. So let's take a look at this. Let's turn it on. And uh, when you mess with temporal noise reduction, you've got an option, again, quite similar to the radius here, where zero frames is off. Um, one frame will search the frame before and the frame after whatever frame you're currently on. And uh, two frames will do two frames before and two frames after. Two frames before and two frames after gives you a much larger search area. And when you have especially bad noise like we have right here, should result in a lot cleaner noise reduction. So let's take a look. We've got the thresholds turned up extremely high right now with the, the full motion radius. So this is this is temporal noise reduction on as high as it goes. So let's take a look here. I've zoomed in pretty far. Um, this is with it off and this is with it on. And you'll notice, wow, his face isn't really changing that much. Um, and that's, that's a big problem. And I'll point out why in just a moment. But let's take a look back here instead. You can see here, the temporal noise reduction is making a huge difference, especially in these backs and these shadows. Let's look over in these trees right here. You can see off, on, off, on. There's a big difference in terms of that, but it's not affecting his face as much as we'd like. And uh, here it is, on, and that's still a pretty unacceptable amount of noise. And uh, if we go and look at our settings, you'll see I've already got the noise reduction turned up just about as high as it'll go. You know, motion radius large, motion estimation, it, faster, better. It shouldn't matter much on a mostly static shot like this. Uh, so what's up? What's going on here? Why does this, this better noise reduction not looking better? And so turning off this uh, noise reduction for a moment, let's take a look at how this chroma noise moves on his face. And you'll see uh, this noise is actually fairly static. So shot to shot, there's still a lot of color going on in here. And, and this is because this sensor was pushed so far uh, out of necessity in order to get this shot. Again, remember how far, how dark it was as he walks into the light. It's a pretty great shot. And again, I, I highly recommend you check out this video. But when we had to push it up, we've revealed a lot of the, the noise that's just present in this sensor. Things like black balancing can help uh, mitigate this some, but what this is doing is it's leaving this mostly static chroma noise shot to shot that's especially exacerbated in his face, which has lots of red. We boosted the saturation quite a bit in order to, to get that color back from the shadows, resulting in this really bad chroma noise. And so what we want to do in this scenario is, uh, let me turn this temporal noise reduction back on. You can see uh, it's especially affecting his, his hair here uh, from the motion estimation, but let's go back to here and let's turn on this spatial noise reduction. But uh, let's go back to it and turn the Luma completely off. And uh, so what we've got here now is this spatial noise reduction reducing all this gross chroma noise. But spatial noise reduction is really bad with Luma noise and it, it does a really bad job about making things blocky. So I've turned off the Luma completely and uh, we'll go back to our temporal noise here. Now blow this up and uh, I'll turn it off and on. You can see it's taking care of the luminoise back here. And so we've sort of merged these two to have this uh, pretty decent uh, compromise where spatial is taking care of our gross chroma noise and the temporal is taking care of our luma without affecting the luma details, keeping our image still looking sharp. And so that's a great combination, and that's really how you should be using these in, in difficult scenarios, is combining both these tools in order to get one great one. Um, let's turn them off for a second and uh, talk about third-party solutions. Now, everybody knows Neat Video and is familiar with it. Now, Neat Video sells a uh, OFX plugin, um, which runs within Resolve. It's a little bit more expensive than the regular version, but it's like 
$200 or something ridiculous, which is such a great value for um, the noise processing it offers. It's better than just about any solution on the market outside of a couple high-end things that aren't available here, like uh, dark energy or um, some of the proprietary things Nukoda makes. But let's, let's take a look and turn this on. And uh, you'll see a little bit of what I'm talking about in terms of the plasticness that this does. And this is utilizing both temporal and spatial noise reduction, um, but it's doing a much more aggressive job of it. It's left a lot of the details here, so you can see his hair still looks pretty good. Let me turn it off. It's not affecting it as much as the uh, temporal noise reduction is. You can still see some of the details in his beard, um, some of the stuff in his jacket and shirt, but his skin has sort of gone fake looking. It's lost the pores and the detail, um, which might never have been there, but you know, it's definitely an issue. And so this is where you run into the issue with Neat Video, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me, let me open this up. We'll take a look at like, what exactly we're doing. So here's what Neat Video is working with. This is the, this is Neat Video 4, the latest version. And that's a quick aside. Um, most people don't realize that they can do this, but you can go to tools here, preferences, performance and uh, optimize your need video settings. A lot of, by default, I think it only runs on CPU and will run real slow. Um, if you go here to optimize settings, you can whatever and hit start and it'll run through all the options of different combinations of your GPU, combinations with your CPU to figure out what's fastest for you. How many cores sh it should devote, you know, like if I use both my GPUs, I can get 17 frames per second. Um, and this is a great way to speed this up because again, noise reduction is processing intensive and anything you can do to make it go faster is definitely, um, appreciated. So let's take a look again at this and you can see a lot of this information that I was showing you earlier here with these split nodes is available here. You can see how much high, low, medium detail noise there is. You can see where each channel is noisy. The green's apparently noisy down here in the shadows and the red's noisier up in the top and... Now using the video is very simple. Um, what you do is you just draw a box um, in an area that you want to analyze the noise. Now you can't just draw this box anywhere unfortunately. You have to be very careful where you do it. If you want to focus on something that's very static in terms of its chroma and its luma. Uh, and this lets you make sure you're only analyzing noise and not different changes in terms of color or how bright something is. You also want to focus on getting something that has as little detail as possible. If I were for example to focus on this area here, which uh, has a a fairly even color and uh, luma value, but it has fill with skin detail, which we'll lose if I if I run this. So looking at this image, you can see over here on this junk that uh, this area is pretty even. Uh, it's out of focus. There's not a whole lot of detail here, and uh, so I can select this. Just hit Auto Profile, run the fine tune on it and uh, zoom out and hit apply. And uh, for the vast majority of things, you'll notice that this is all you need to do. Uh, let me turn off this open FX, open this up and zoom out. That is a great out of the box noise reduction. That took almost no time. We didn't have to fiddle with anything. Um, there's still detail in his beard and his hair. Uh, his skin doesn't look great, but it's not horrible, um, and we can fix this easily with some grain, um, which I've got enabled over here. This is actually using the uh, Film Convert engine, which has some really horrible looking LUTs in it, but is a great, great grain generator, as long as you're not in an ASUS project. Um, so you turn that on, and suddenly we've got this nice, even film looking grain without ugly chroma blotching. And uh, we've come a really long way since our original shot. And so going back and turning that off real quick, we'll go talk about this again. Now, if you wanted to, for example, use just temporal or just spatial noise reduction, you, you can disable them or enable them here in the noise filter settings tab. And uh, you can also do other things like reduce dust and scratches or get rid of some of the artifact removal that sometimes occurs um, with post sharpening. And uh, you can even add smoothing and sharpening here, um, as well as the same mixing tabs that we see down here. And uh, you can adjust the, the quality. Um, temporal, you can actually do just ridiculous amounts of temporal reduction. 
um, for this project for the sake of uh, rendering. I've got it down to one. But it's a tremendously powerful plugin and something I really recommend. One thing to note with it, though, is that if you're working on high resolution projects, uh, 4K, 5K, 6K footage, especially uh, footage that, that needs to be debayered, so, you know, your dragon, your epic, and you're working on a 4K or greater timeline, neat video and uh, temporal noise reduction in general uses a lot of VRAM. So for every single frame the uh, renderer is trying to create, it needs to render approximately if you're on just a single radius uh, three or if you're on um, two or five you know up to 11 or or five frames just for a single shot and so it quickly adds up in your VRAM and so if you have a card that I've seen cards choke at three gig VRAM four gig VRAM um, which is why I've actually got a Titan in here specifically for this so that the 12 gigs guarantees I don't run out but uh, I've seen Neat Video Choke, especially Neat Video 4, on 4 gig cards. Um, so just one thing to be aware of, uh, I th you should be fine with 6 gigs on most projects. It is something to uh, consider, and uh, sometimes disabling temporal noise reduction and relying on just spatial is uh, all you can do because of that VRAM issue. I can't recommend Neat Video enough. This works in both the regular version of Resolve as well as the licensed pay for version. Um, it's easily worth the $200 or so that it costs. Um, and the devs are really responsive and I don't have anything but nice things to say about the Neat Video team. Just be careful not to overdo it and ensure that if you're using this and uh, you want to avoid plastic looking human skins, you need to add grain back over on top of your project in order to get the detail back. But uh, we'll talk more about grain in it upcoming video because that's a, a whole topic that, that can use plenty of time on its own. Now I just want to go over this one more time and take a look at uh, this other thing I've set up just to illustrate a couple more concepts that we've already discussed. Um, so here I've got the same primary that uh, we've already done before uh, and then I've got this splitter node again so this is red, green, blue and then this qualifier right here. And uh, currently none of these are doing anything, but uh, I wanted to show you a couple of options here. So um, say we wanted to just get rid of certain parts of the noise in this image. Like we know this red noise here is terrible and this blue noise down here is terrible. So what we can do is go down here and affect just this spatial noise reduction for just this section. Um, now you might be tempted to say, oh, I want to get rid of all this uh, red noise here. Let me just jack up the chroma. And you'll see, oh no, nothing's happening. And that's because uh, what we're dealing with here is just the single red channel, which actually has no chrome associated with it. It's just been stripped down to be just the Luma component of that channel that's recombined. So chroma doesn't do anything because there is no chroma. But if we jack up the Luma, you can see we've got this uh, very noiseless, almost pixelated, uh, this looks like one of those cheap Photoshop plugins, but, it, but the noise is gone. Um, in the red channel. And if we go over to the blue channel, we do the same thing here. I can turn this up. And we've got another, like, solarized, cheap looking thing. But if we turn it off, we can see we've got a, a pretty decent approximation in between. We can still, there's still green noise, especially down here in the shirt, but it's nothing bad. Um, we can go back and say we want to take out just a little bit of that green noise. We can turn it up just a touch here. And uh, while we are impacting our, our sharpness at this point, um, this is a way to, to handle like, oh, we need a lot more red reduction or we need, you know, not as much blue and then hardly any green. So you can get really fine tuning into here in order to preserve as much Luma de detail as possible without having to go into temporal noise reduction. So that's a great trick in terms of uh, analyzing just certain parts of the image. Similar here, um, we've got this qualifier and say we, uh, we only want to affect, you know, the shadows. So we've got real bad shadow noise. We can go in and uh, go over to our qualifier here and um, we can lower you know this down the luminance down so that we're only affecting the shadows here and even this out so something like that we can clean this up so it's not so messy maybe add a little blur to it and uh, now we can clean up you know, just the shadows and so you can see back here Pulling this up, that this area is cleaned up, but our, our highlights are still great. And this isn't a good 
solution for this particular image. But if you have a camera that shoots lots of shadow noise, but the highlights look beautiful, then this is a great technique in order to only affect the parts of the image that really need noise reduction. Again, the noise reduction, the key is to do it to only the parts that need it and do it as little as possible. So you're not impacting your sharpness and enforcing yourself on necessary render time. Um, similarly, you can uh, apply the same effect to uh, just specific colors. Like if I want to just do his face here, and uh, this isn't probably the best way um, to do this. Uh, I think you'd be better served probably working within uh, the details here, uh, the, the channel splitter. But uh, it, it'll work in a pinch. And just to do something rough, and we can clean up just a face here and leave all this other noise. Um, so that's a great technique in terms of just getting to the parts of the image that are necessary in order to clean up as best as you can. Now, for those of you without the full version of Resolve, which enable these spatial noise reduction and temporal noise reduction, and who can't or don't want to purchase neat video, there's a little bit of a trick we can do to get some noise reduction when we're in dire straits here, and uh, I'm going to show you that real quick. And so this trick depends on the fact that most of the sharpness and detail in, in video is contained within the Luma channel. And the individual components of the color channel can be messed with without affecting the sharpness of the overall image too much. And so again, I've got this splitter combiner node here. I've got this extra node that's not doing anything. Um, if you want to do this again, it, it's right here. It's add splitter combiner node, alt Y, uh, command Y on Mac, I believe. Um, and it splits your image up into red, green, and blue um, and combines them back again right here. And so you can go here and we can double look or we can look and see you know, here's our bad noise in the red channel. Here's our minimal noise in the green channel. And here's our medium noise on the uh, blue channel. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our splitter channels here and uh, go up to the red. And uh, we want to make it so we can see just what we're doing here. And I'm going to just click over to the blur panel and uh, just blur the hell out of the red channel. And I'm going to go down the green channel and, or the blue channel and blur the hell out of that. Let's see what we've done. Uh, so here we are. We've got this, I mean, not great looking, but not noisy image here. Uh, we can compare it to what we had originally. Um, and uh, it's not nearly as sharp as our original image, but, you know, it's the details there. Uh, it's, it's usable. It maybe looks a little bit glowy. Um, but this is a great trick in order to get rid of noise if you don't have a noise reduction plugin and you desperately need to. Now you'll see we've got this green fringing everywhere. Um, this is a, a part of the problem of uh, pushing this stuff. So we can, you know, sort of mess with these values here to try and push back some of that green fringing. So I've sort of shifted stuff up and down. Um, that sort of slides our noise side to side. Uh, and you, you can play around with things to try and, and get around this. So let's let's say maybe we wanted to, you know, switch this to uh, node sizing here and and zoom zoom in a little bit on the green channel. Just just the tiniest little bit. Uh, now we've got all this chromatic aberration. Uh, I can maybe maybe we'll shift this up a little bit. No, that doesn't do it. What about Zooming, zooming out there. So that's that's better than it was. You can see here again how we've reduced this noise. And uh, again, this is not definitely not the preferred way to do it. We've got this fringing on the side. We probably have to punch it on the whole thing now. But if you are in a pinch and uh, you do not have any noise reduction plugins by splitting all this stuff into separate channels, it's a great way to get around that. Um, alternatively, here, let me go ahead and reset this. Um, let me grab my primary connection correction from over here. So get this, go back over here, and this down here, load up my primary. We can also do a similar thing with a layer node um, change this to add, lower the saturation on our top, lower the gain on our bottom. 
So this should be more or less the same image we were seeing before. We'll double check. Yep, it's the same. And uh, doing the same exact thing down here in our Chroma channel. And uh, we can see again, uh, and I'll temporarily turn this up so we can see what we're doing, but just blur that. And let me turn this back down, turn this off and zoom in. And uh, you know, we've got, here's here's what it was, here's what it is now. So it, it's a pretty passable in term, noise correction in terms of getting rid of that chroma noise and leaving just the luma noise um, while still preserving our details. Because again, the detail is carried here. You can see this is where, you know, the shirt and the hair and stuff. And this right here is just color instructions. So by just blurring part of the image, we can get a sort of um, selective noise reduction. And again, this is where we were, this is where we are now. And I don't know how much YouTube compression is going to make this look like garbage, but um, it is a big difference. And we've got some sort of desaturated fringing uh, along the top and the edges, but this is a great way to get noise reduction in a pinch when you don't have any other tools. And that about does it in terms of noise reduction. We've covered what noise is, uh, where we can see it, different types, luma and chroma, and then different types of noise reduction, both spatial, temporal, third-party plugins like Neat Video, and also uh, different ways to apply noise reduction to only the parts of the image that need it. I hope you found this helpful. And I'll have some new tutorials coming out soon about things like grain and other things to help you make your noise reduction process a little bit easier. Uh, this is David Dracivi again, and uh, thanks for watching.